Hello and welcome to another Leak Code Solution video. This is problem number 29, divide two integers. This problem we are given two integers, dividend and divisor. Divide two integers without using multiplication, division, and the mod operator. The integer division should truncate towards zero, which means losing its fractional part. For example, 8.345 would be truncated to eight and negative 2.7335 would be truncated to negative two. Return the quotient after dividing dividend by divisor. Note, assume we are dealing with an environment that could only store integers within the 32-bit signed integer range, negative two to the 31st to two to the 31st minus one. For this problem, if the quotient is strictly greater than two to the 31st minus one, then return two to the 31st minus one. And if the quotient is strictly less than negative two to the 31st, then return negative two to the 31st. For example, one, we're given an input dividend of 10 and divisor of three. The output is three. This is because 10 divided divided by three is 3.3 .3 repeating, which is truncated to three. And for example, two, our input dividend is seven and divisor is negative three, so our output is negative two, as seven divided by negative three is negative 2.3 repeating, which is truncated to negative two. Let's go through an example. For our example, our dividend will be 160 and our divisor will be five. So the first thing we wanna do with our dividend divisor is determine if we're going to have a negative or a positive output. And we can do that by setting a sign value, which will represent our output signed value. So this sign value will be set to one if both our dividend and divisor are the same sign. So if they're both positive or if they're both negative, we'll set it to one. In this case, it will be one because they're both positive. And the other case is this sign will be negative one if our dividend or divisor are negative while the other is positive. Once we have our sign, we can pull that out and just work with them as both positive. In this case, they're both positive already, so we don't have to worry about it. And then we'll want to loop while our dividend is greater than our divisor. For this problem, we'll be using bitwise functions to calculate the division without using multiplication, division, or the mod function. So the one we'll be focusing on is the two less than signs, which is the bitwise left shift function. And what this does is it shifts our integer value to the left one. If your value is equal to one and you do the bitwise left shift once, it'll then be equal to 10. Pretty much the way we're gonna be doing division without using division multiplication or the mod function is with subtraction. So we'll be subtracting our divisor from our dividend multiple times and keep track of every time we do it. And then the number of times we subtract while our dividend is still greater than our divisor will be our quotient. And we'll be using the bitwise function to do it a bit more efficiently. So the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is keep track of our multiple and our temp divisor. Our multiple will be equal to one to start off and our temp divisor will be equal to our divisor and the only reason we're having it as a temp divisor is because we're gonna manipulate it and we still wanna know what our original divisor was. So what we're gonna to wanna to do is check to see if our dividend is greater than our temp divisor after we do a bitwise left shift function on it. So our dividend is 160 and our temp divisor is five. And once we do the bitwise left shift function on it, it becomes 50. So 160 is still greater than 50. So we're gonna left shift it once so now our temp divisor is 50. And since we shifted it over once, we wanna also do that to our multiple. So doing a left shift once on one equals 10. And now we can check this again. So if we do a left shift again on 50, it becomes 500. And now 160 is no longer greater than 500. So we only wanna shift it once. So now that we've determined our multiple and our temp divisor, we wanna update our dividend and our quotient. So our dividend is now going to be 160 minus our temp divisor of 50 which equals 110, and our quotient equals our quotient plus our multiple, which equals 10. So now we're starting to loop over and our multiple is gonna be set to one again, and our temp divisor is gonna be set to our original divisor again. And then we need to check again if our dividend is greater than our temp divisor left shifted once, which it is still, because 110 is greater than 50. So we'll update our multiple and temp divisor. And we can do this check again. 110 is not greater than 500, so we know that our multiple is 10 and our temp divisor is 50 again. So now we can update our dividend and quotient again. Now our dividend is 60 and our quotient is 20. Now that we're at the top of our loop, our multiple is one again, our temp divisor is five, and we can check that our dividend is still greater than our divisor, which is true, 60 is still greater than five. Now we can determine our multiple and temp divisor again. 60 is greater than 50, so we'll update our multiple and temp divisor, but 60 is not greater than 500, so we know we're good here. And once we update our dividend and quotient again, our dividend is 10 and our quotient is now 30. Now back at the top of the loop, our multiple is one, temp divisor is five, our dividend is still greater than our divisor, 10 is still greater than five. 
So now we can do our check with our dividend and our temp divisor. Our dividend is 10, and if we left shift our temp divisor again, it'd be 50, which is not a true statement. So our multiple this time will be one, and our temp divisor will still be five. So now our dividend is five, and our quotient is 31. And back at the top of the loop, multiple is one, temp divisor is five, and we'll do this again. Our dividend is not greater than our temp divisor left shifted once, so our multiple stays as one and our temp divisor stays as five. So now our dividend is zero and our quotient is 32. And since our dividend is no longer greater than our divisor, we end here and we'll output our quotient of 32. Let's jump into the code. The first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is check to see if our dividend is equal to zero, because if it is, we just wanna return zero. Next we'll wanna check to see if our divisor is one or negative one. If it's one, we can just return our dividend. And if it's negative one, we can just return our negative dividend. If our divisor is not one or negative one, we'll wanna go through what we did in the example and use our bitwise function to subtract off our divisor from our dividend. So the first thing we'll wanna do is determine our sign. And our sign will be equal to one if our divisor and dividend are both the same sign. Otherwise, it'll be negative one. Now that we have our sign, we can get the absolute value of both our dividend and divisor. And now we'll want to initialize our quotient, which will be our output value. Next, we'll want to loop while our dividend is greater than or equal to our divisor. Next, we'll want to initialize our temp divisor and our multiple. Our temp divisor will be equal to our divisor and our multiple will be equal to one. Next, we'll want to loop while our dividend is greater than or equal to our temp divisor left shifted once. While this is true, we want to left shift our temp divisor and our multiple. And the two less than signs than an equal sign is the same thing as doing temp divisor equals temp divisor left shifted once similar to plus equals or minus equals. Now that we have our temp divisor and multiple, we want to update our dividend and quotient. So our dividend will be equal to our dividend minus our temp divisor, and our quotient will be our quotient plus our multiple. And that's it for our looping. So at this point, we can just return our quotient. One other thing to note is in the problem statement, it told us to assume that we're using a 32-bit signed integer and to keep it within the signed integer range. So we want to add a check to make sure we're still within that range. So to do that, we'll first initialize our min and max values. And both of these values were given to us in the problem statement. Now that we have our min and max values, we'll want to check our quotient against them once we're done looping. And if our quotient's greater than our max, we just wanna return our max. And if it's less than our min, we wanna return our min. Otherwise, we're just gonna be returning our quotient as is. Had two small mistakes in the code. The first is when our divisor is one or negative one, we actually wanna set our quotient equal to our dividend or our negative dividend, not return it. And the second thing is before we do our quotient checks, we want to multiply it by our sign to account for our original signs. So now with those two changes, our code should be all good and we can run this. All test case passed, so let's submit. Our code was accepted, so that's it for this problem. If you like this video and wanna see more content like this, make sure to check out my channel. Thanks for watching.